Hi, I'm Tom Blevins at Texas Diabetes and Endocrinology. I'd like to tell you a little bit about a study that was recently published, and it was published in June of 2019. And this is a, another study that looks at a diabetes medicine and asks the question, does this medicine improve risk of cardiovascular disease? This is called a rewind study. It's a study that looked at dulaglutide. Now that, that that's a drug we use in clinical practice already. It's a weekly injection of that drug called Trulicity and it looked at dulaglutide and cardiovascular outcome. This is a large trial done at 371 sites in 24 countries, and it involved men and women at least 50 years of age or greater. They had to have type 2 diabetes, and they had to have either have had a previous cardiovascular event, like an NMI, heart attack, or stroke, or something like that, or they had to have multiple risk factors. Well, it turns out that only 31% or so had a history of a known cardiovascular event. That means that the other group, the, the majority of the patients actually had risk, but they didn't have a history of an event. So you would call them a primary prevention uh, subgroup. And actually it was the majority of the patients. The way the study was done is they were given either the active agent, the dulaglutide, which is the weekly injection, or they were given a placebo injection. And they were followed for over five years. What was being looked at here, the primary outcome measure, was first occurrence of, of either non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, or death from cardiovascular causes. That was the primary outcome measure. There were about 9,900 patients overall, and the mean age was 66 or so. The A1C at baseline was 7.2, it was already pretty good. And about 46% were women. And, and they were uh, then, then put into the study and, and they were divided into, into the two groups. And I have a slide that shows the, the baseline characteristics. If you'd like to refer, I'll tell you this, this was a well-randomized study, ages, uh, most of the factors you normally look at were well-randomized in, into each, each group. Let's go right to outcomes. At, at 5.4 years or so, uh, there was a reduction in the primary outcome measure that I mentioned earlier in favor of, of course, the dulaglutide. And so uh, the data is here. Much of the reduction uh, was in the area of non-fatal stroke, and a bit was in, in the area of cardiovascular death. But if you look at the composite, there was significantly less, uh, fewer events in the people on treatment versus not. And I have a subgroup analysis I'll show you here. Uh, you, you can see that most groups showed favorability in terms of results with the dulaglutide. And then, also, there's some data here I'll show you that shows that hemoglobin A1C was a bit lower in the people on the active agent. Now, the weight was lower, systolic blood pressure was lower, and, and also uh, the heart rate was a bit higher in the people on the active agent. And that's uh, some, some marker data that might be interesting. So really, what does this mean? Where, where do we go here? The, what are the clinical implications to us in practice? Well, uh, it is that dulaglutide reduces major cardiovascular outcomes in people who are you might consider to be middle-aged and also older uh, people, men and women, with type 2 diabetes. And it's, it's a safe agent in the cardiovascular realm. It actually seems to reduce events. And this is uh, the first, by the way, and this is important to know, major cardiovascular trial of a medicine used to treat people with diabetes to lower the blood sugar. They had a large primary prevention treatment group and that group did have benefit. This adds to a very growing uh, bit of evidence that this type of medicine, the glucagon-like one peptide agonist, the GLP-1 receptor agonist, this shows that these agents reduce uh, major adverse cardiovascular events, at least the ones that have been studied that show the results like the dulaglutide. Really interesting information, I think important to us in clinical practice.